Hello everyone, this is my review of the Dsoon hunting trail camera. This is just going to be a quick fire review and my initial thoughts about it. I do get contacted regularly uh, by different companies asking me to review their products. Most of them are turned down but if there's something which I feel is going to be a decent product then I will take the review on. Now this is, as I said, this is just a quick fire review so if you want a more in-depth review, AM Bushcraft and Hunting reviewed a very similar Dsoon hunting trail camera not so long ago. There will be a link in the description so after watching this video I recommend you go and watch that one as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give you my impressions of what I think about this camera. I've had it for a couple of weeks so I have had it on test for a little while. So first things first, the feel of it. I'm going to compare this to my other camera that I've had, I've had that for a few years now uh, and it's probably about half the price of this one and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the other one but there are differences which you can tell in the price so this one the first thing that I noticed is the quality it's very chunky and it's very well built you also get a memory card included and it can also be padlocked at the side and also password protected something which this camera has which my other cheaper trail cam doesn't have is side sensors. I've never come across that before because I don't really look into it too much. But the good thing about this is because of these side sensors, if you turn them on, because you can either have them on or off, when something comes from the side, before this camera sees it, the camera is already turned on. I found that to be quite a useful uh, feature of this item, particularly if you've got a deer or a fox which is like coming in from the side. So we'll open it up and we'll just have a little look inside so you undo these two little catches here like I said before it does seem just very fat and chunky you get your big fat fingers round now underneath this cover is where you'll put your eight AA batteries you can just stick four in there still work but if you want to get double life expectancy stick another four in that's completely up to you Just at the bottom here, you'll have a switch, it's currently an off, you'll have test in the middle and on at the far right. To set it up, click it once to test, and now your device turns on. I have a password on this so I'm just going to quickly put that in. So the camera's turned on now, I flick that switch into the middle to put it onto test, and this is where you can change all your settings. And you simply press the menu button and then use these arrow keys just to change whatever settings you want and press OK to confirm. I've already changed my settings to what I want, so it's I'm always going to be using a uh, video mode, but you can have photo, video, or photo and video, but it's always going to be video for me. Photo resolution, not interested in that. Video resolution. Now this can actually film in 4K, but for me just 1080p is perfectly fine video length usually I don't want it eating up my memory card particularly if it's going to be lots and lots of footage in the video so I just stick it on 10 seconds audio recording yes or no simple enough shot lag now when I'm filming my scrolls if I have it set to a shot lag of 20 seconds, it's just going to keep recording that same scroll for the next 10 minutes that it's on the feeder, and it'll just eat up your memory card. So I just leave it for 5 minutes, I know what time they're going to come then. So 5 minutes will do for me. Side motion sensors, as I said, you can turn them on or off, I turn them on, just in case I see a fox coming in. Sensitivity motion sensors, I just stuck it onto high. Depends if there's a lot of bad weather, so if there's a lot of bad weather, wind and rain, uh, you, you're probably sticking onto law, otherwise you're going to have leaves and rain setting off your camera. So these are just usual settings, I don't need to go too much in the, into these. You've got password protection, just in case you want to add some security onto that. I've had it before where someone's tried getting into my trail camera on my other camera and having a password 
certainly stop this person from getting in to see some of the footage that was on there. Now you'll come down to format memory card. When you put the memory card in, first thing you should ever do with any new memory card or any new system that you have, such as a camera, is format it. Because you don't want to go out there without checking it and then your memory card's corrupted. So just that's a simple enough one to do. All data will be will be deleted. Yes, this is already empty anyway. Now you're ready to go and stick it on a tree. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm just setting up this trail camera on a tree. This is going to be aiming at my squirrel feeder. I've got here before first light, so as you can tell I've got a head torch on because I can't see a thing myself. So I'll just sped this clip up, just putting in my password, setting the trail camera, and now it'll activate in about 15 seconds. We're just heading into winter here in the UK and because my feeder is in quite a dense woodland it is quite dark in there for pretty much most of the day now. So the camera was filming in its night mode but it does sometimes come into its day mode just like here. You can see the activity on this on this feeder where there's blackbirds about and pheasants as well. This is completely pitch black see just how dark it is in the background night vision IR is working very well and also the daytime mode working very well so that's some footage that you've seen I've given you a few thoughts what I think of it so far as you can now see on the video clips the video quality is absolutely superb it's so easy to use and anybody can use it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compare this to my older cheaper camera. Now my older cheaper camera which I've had for a few years now still works perfectly and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but I'm going to compare it like an old iPad to your new iPad and you'll understand what I mean. So this is my old trail camera and this is my new trail camera. What I'm going to show you now is the speed difference between an old iPad and your new iPad. First up, the old girl. All I'm going to quickly do here is press this as fast as I can and just watch the speed of this and you'll see it lag. And you can see it's struggling. Now this does this on every setting that you're trying to do. It just takes that little bit longer. Exact same test again, but this time on the D-Soon. Watch the speed. You can see the speed difference, you can see there's a reason why there's a price difference. It's not a massive issue, especially if you've got more patience, but it's showing that whatever is inside this is a better quality than what's in a cheaper item. So there you go, you've set all your settings on your camera, you're ready to go fix this to a tree or wherever you want to stick it onto a wall, and now you just need to set it. All you need to do is flick the switch down here over to on and then it will give you a countdown timer so it gives you a 15 second countdown timer that gives you enough time to close it put your latches down and go away before it starts recording you now it's in recording mode so this was just a quick fire review as I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's just too much for me. I know what settings I like and I know how to set it up. It's very user friendly. So I'm just going to tell you now what I like about it and what I dislike. First thing I'm going to talk about is my dislikes. And that's the charging cable. In this day and age, why do I have a charging cable which was used for my PlayStation 3? It's a completely obsolete cable. They shouldn't come with that. They should be coming with at least USB Type-C. It's so much better, so much easier. You don't have to keep clogging up your house with random different cables. Battery cover. This is the same that I've always encountered. They just seem to have this little tiny catch here. And you saw me before when I was changing the batteries. 
I don't have fingers or fingernails which are thin enough to get in there and I only have small hands I know they're like sausage fingers but still you always have to find something just to get underneath that catch just to pop it off if you've gone out somewhere to go install this on a tree or whatever you need to change the batteries and you don't have anything like that with you well you're just gonna have to try and find a stick or a twig to do it not a major issue but just a little bit annoying what do I like about this the video quality is fantastic the fact you can record in 4k is a real step up in my eyes the chunkiness of it the quality and the feel of it and those side sensors really do make a massive difference it's so easy to use the usability is fantastic and you saw how fast it is to use when you're scrolling through the menu so you can easily just quickly just change those settings as quickly as you want so that's my review of this DSUN trail camera would I recommend it definitely yes it's a fantastic item so if you are in the market for a new trail camera I would seriously suggest considering one of these that's my conclusion on this camera hopefully you found it informative and helped you make a decision if you are looking for a new camera and which one to go for like I said at the beginning if you want a more in-depth review, AM Bushcraft and Hunting did a very similar review uh, of a very similar trail camera to this. So please look in the video description and thank you for watching.